Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So maybe you're wondering why we're going through all this trouble of doing things in this way. Maybe I, uh, I think I should explain a little bit more. Why we are putting things in separate folders like this and we're just not coding page by page as things used to be done a long time ago. Uh, by the way, I don't think we'll be needing the switch statement anymore. So let me just remove that. And please, if you can, do not put the uh, the ending PHP tag here, because sometimes what happens if you close the PHP tag like this, you end up with empty space like that. So this is considered HTML because it's not part of PHP. But if you didn't have this closing tag, this is part of PHP, so it doesn't count as HTML. It may cause some problems when trying to redirect a page because if you try to redirect and there's empty space, it will fail because headers have already been sent. So just keep that in mind. If you can avoid uh, closing the PHP tags, just avoid it. Okay, so the reason we're doing this is for scalability. We, we don't want to have the hassle of creating a page from scratch and then putting a link to that page, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, We want to have a system where if, for example, I need a new page to create a new page, all I have to do is create a controller in here with that same name, the same way this is home.php. And then I'll go to views and inside views, I'll create a, a, a view with the same name like this. And then the, uh, the rest will handle itself because we already have a system that works. So the reason we're going through all this trouble is for scalability. This really helps when starting your, your website, you may think, oh, this is not going to be a big website. It's just going to be a small thing, but things change very quickly. You'll find yourself making hundreds of pages and then it will just get out of control. So it's better to have things organized in the beginning. That way, even when you're scaling, it's easy, it's easy to know what's what. So if I, I have a problem on my homepage, I know there are just two pages to go and figure that problem out. And that's the home page controller and the home uh, view file. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, let's create a few more files in the core folder. So in here we have functions, we have the init, but we need to be able to connect to the database. So we'll have a database file here, database.php. So we're not going to use MySQL, we'll use SQLite. So that's what we'll be coding here. And so every time you put a file in the core folder, you must add it to the init, otherwise it won't be part of the project. So the only file uh, that will be missing here is the init itself. So any file in the core should be uh, included here. And how do you know when to put a file in the core folder? Well, if that file should, be, should run every time uh, a page is clicked, regardless what page it is, then that file should reside in the core folder because it's part of the core system. And uh, so certain files like when we are connecting to the products table, those don't need to run all the time. So they go to models and then views are different depending on what you're viewing on your page. So the views go here and then the controllers, of course, for every page, you need a controller that is going to be processing information in case there's any user supplied data or there's need to read from the database, the controller will tell the model which model to read from which table, etc., etc. So that's how things are going to go here. But here we want to include the database file. So it really depends here which one you want to put first. Usually I think functions come first and then we can do the database because sometimes the database file may need to use existing functions. So we'll do that. And uh, what else can we add here? We may need a config file here. So new, let's save this and let's save it as config.php. So the config will con contain all configuration. So that definitely comes first. So let's put config.php. Uh, because the database may need the config information in order to connect to the database, uh, the database file, I mean. All right, so config, we'll put maybe application name there. So let's put some PHP tags and let's define a few constants 
I'm going to say define uh, app name, app underscore name like this, and then we're going to name it uh, my point of sale like this. So we can use a small letter here Oop. like that. So the reason we're using the define is because we want this to be a constant. Now the advantage of a constant is that unlike other variables, this is available everywhere on your app, whether it's inside a class, whether it's inside a function, it will be available. And because this value doesn't need to change, so it's better suited to stay in a constant. So that's the app name. You can add an app description and other settings that you want, or maybe database connection strings, etc. But since we are not using MySQL, we won't need to define things like localhost and all that. Um, no, we won't need to just, uh, we'll see what we will do with uh, SQLite. And after that, we'll go to the views folder. And in here, I'll create a new file. This one will be named home dot view dot php so i'm adding the dot view here just so i can know when i'm editing that this is a view file it's not the same as the controller so let me save that as well so here i can put some html now let's say h1 home h like this okay then let me go to uh, the home controller itself so instead of this i want to require the um, the view file. So I'm going to require the file. Now, in order for me to do this, I would have to do something like this, app, and then I go to views, and then I say home.view.php, something like this. So when I do this, it's going to work. So let's try and uh, refresh. And there we go, we have the home page. So what's happening is that we are loading the home controller, but the home controller is loading the view, which is this home view there. So the reason we are separating the two, the controller and the view, is so that we can edit the appearance of our uh, product without affecting how it works. So all the functioning issues will be here in the controller, but then the view is just going to show us the result. That way we can edit the view without worrying about messing up our code. But doing this all the time is not a good idea. And furthermore, we may want to change how we are loading our views later. So in such a situation, we have to use a function instead. Now, if I can use a function and do this, for example, I say load view, maybe that's the function I create. And then I give it uh, the name of the view to load, something like this. So this really simplifies things if we do it this way. So this will be a function that would automatically load this. The only problem is this is a function. So for uh, for variables to global variables to work here, I have to actually include them like this. Maybe put some data in there, which is going to work for the view. Now this kind of increases the amount of code we are going to have to type because I'll have to put things in a, an array and then send it to the view. Because if, for example, I had a a value just here let's say my var like this is equal to hey like that and then i happen to load a view like this since this is a function this my var will not be available in here unless i send it with uh, i send it to the function like this because uh, you need uh, local scope variables in here so this becomes a little bit of a problem. So let's try and uh, see that in action. So what I would do is this require, I'm going to cut this out and uh, let me remove this. Let's just say load view, uh, home view like this. So we're going to go to functions and create that function. So I'm going to say function load view and then uh, the view name there like so. So I'll paste this code here. It's just going to say require this particular file. Now we're assuming that the file exists here already. Uh, so that's okay. But what we want to change here, because remember that we are telling it to only load the home like this. So that's the only thing we should replace here is this part like this. Okay. So 
yeah uh, since there are double quotes here this will be evaluated before putting it here and in this case since this is home it's going to be views home.view.php which is great so let's see that in action if i refresh we won't see any difference here of course because we are still loading the view from the controller here now the question is will my var be available if it will then well and good so let's try that again so we're loading that view let me go to the view file itself and try to echo my var like this okay so for those of you that do not know this putting the equal sign here is the same as doing php echo like that okay so let's try this out and it says undefined variable my var so this becomes a problem because I can't have access to my um, the variables that were up here in the controller. No, sometimes this is desirable, but this is a simple application and I want to just be able to load a view and all the variables that were on top here be available in my view as well. Because the solution to this is by doing this, I can do that like so. Add it there and then it will be available now Oh, wait a minute. Uh, let's go to functions. Wait, home view, my var. Uh, okay. Oh, that's because uh, inside the function here, I'm supposed to have put it here as well, like this. Then it will be available now. So this all increases the, uh, the problem. So I don't want to do things like this. What I want to do instead is I want it to return a path to the views. So here I'm just going to say view underscore path or something like this. View path or views path like that. So depending on your preference, you can use camel case. I kind of like this version. Views path and then that. So instead of requiring, it's just going to return a path uh, that includes this view here. So which is right here views path great but let's first check if this actually is valid so we say if file exists and oops yeah so if that file exists right there then let's return its path like so uh, else we can say something like uh, return no not just return let's just echo something uh, view uh, I want this view right there whatever the name of the view is not found like that okay so I'll put single quotes around this so that it can be quoted okay so if the file exists uh, then let's return its path its full path so here we just have a word like home and then the home will be replaced here and then we check if this actually is a valid path if it is then let's return it so in this case if i go to my controller instead of saying load view i'm going to say views path because that's a path to all the views and then from there let's get uh, home like this now since this returns a path i can now do require like this okay so back here let's refresh and you see everything works and i still have access to my variable up here even though i didn't include it here because we are simply requiring a file and loading it in place so it will have access to that as well so the good thing here is here i can put folder names as well so i can say something like authentication and then uh, login page like that uh, auth login something like this and it's going to look for uh, the file inside the auth folder and then login file so this is pretty neat so let's leave it at home like this and let's remove this one let's go to the home view itself let's remove that okay very nice our controller is working now if I happen to open another page that doesn't exist then this is what i get so we're going to handle that a bit better okay so so far so good we have the functions we need um, 
we have um, what else do we have uh, configuration we have init very nice so let's see if we can use the in the home view here if i can do h4 something like this and then we can echo out the app name like that so since it's a constant we don't put a dollar sign there so let me remove all that let's go to the home page and there we go so my point of sale home page great things are looking up so we are done with our routing system it's as simple as that so let me close all these files so now everything is working as intended we have our views we have our controllers we have our core and we are good to go we just need to ensure that um, every time it's the index page that's being loaded uh, that's all we need to do so the reason i didn't also include the um, the ht access file here is because uh, php desktop doesn't use apache for its server so even though we added an ht access file it will be ignored once we put it in the uh, php desktop thing so it's pretty useless we just need to make sure that only index page is loaded in every link that we have all right so i'll see you in the next video where we begin to design our user interface which is the main application for our point of sale i'll see you then